Charles II of Spain is remembered for being the last Habsburg ruler of the Spanish Empire and his disabilities, which most likely came from generations of inbreeding. Today, we'll answer the question of how inbred Charles II really was. Charles was the only surviving son of Mariana of Austria and Philip IV of Spain, with his parents being uncle and niece. It was normal for nobility to marry within the extended family, but the Austrian and Spanish Habsburgs followed this policy in an unusual degree, which we will see shortly when we take a closer look at Charles II's family tree. In fact, Charles' older sister Margaret Theresa of Spain was another one of the Habsburg women to marry her uncle. Today we know that close marriages like the Habsburgs performed are extremely unhealthy for the resulting children. Due to generations of incest, the Habsburgs were most famous for their so-called Habsburg jaw. In fact, Charles' jaw was so malfunctioned that he couldn't chew his food properly, which resulted in stomach problems. Further, the young king was physically disabled, disfigured and mentally ill. Charles did not speak until the age of 4 or walk until the age of 8. Funnily enough, his sister Margaret did not have these kind of health problems, nor did her daughter Maria from her marriage to her uncle Leopold I. Charles is also believed to have been impotent since he failed to produce any heirs during his two marriages. Now let's take a closer look at Charles II's family tree. Like I already told you, you can see that his parents were uncle and niece, which resulted in strange family relationships. For example, his maternal grandmother Maria Anna of Spain was also his aunt through his father. He also shared the same grandparents with his mother, Mariana. You can also see that his paternal grandfather, Philip III, was also a result of an uncle-niece marriage, just like his maternal grandmother, Margaret of Austria. Now that I pointed out these marriages, let's have a closer look at some cousin marriages. Charles II's mother was a child of a marriage between first cousins, as well as his maternal grandfather, Ferdinand III. Something else interesting about Charles II's family tree is that his whole family descends from these two people. Philip I and Joanna of Castile. We kind of have three branches coming from these two individuals. Charles V's branch, Ferdinand I's branch and their sister Isabella's branch. Charles succeeded to the throne in 1665 when he was only three years old. Since he was a minor, his mother was appointed Queen Regent by the Council of Castile. She ruled Spain through a political difficult time with the help of her advisors until Charles became a legal adult at age 14. Charles married the eldest niece of Louis XIV, Marie-Louise of Orleans, in 1679. The marriage was arranged by his illegitimate half-brother, Don Juan José, who died shortly before the wedding. Unfortunately, Marie died 10 years later without giving birth to an heir, so Charles had to remarry, this time to Maria Anna of Neuburg from the house of Wittelsbach. She was mainly selected since her family was known for its fertility. Unfortunately, they neither were able to produce an heir. The lack of heirs made the question of his successor increasingly urgent since the Spanish crown passed according to cognac primogeniture, which means it was possible for a woman or their descendants to inherit. That meant his sister Margaret or his half-sister Maria would have been able to pass their rights to their children. Since Maria was married to the King of France, Louis XIV, and the union between France and Spain was not wished, Maria renounced her inheritance. Margaret's daughter Maria Antonia married Max Emmanuel of Bavaria, but unfortunately she died in 1692 with only one surviving son, Joseph Ferdinand. Charles II made his nephew heir, but he died in 1699 at only six years old. His death left Louis XIV's eldest son, the Grand Dauphin, heir to the Spanish throne, once again implying a union between Spain and France. But in 1700, France, England and the Dutch agreed on an alternative heir, Archduke Charles. Since most of Spanish nobility disliked Charles' wife Maria Anna and her German courtiers, they viewed a French candidate as more likely to ensure their independence. They persuaded Charles to alter his will once again and to declare Philip of Anjou his new heir. Charles died on November 1, 1700 and Philip was proclaimed King of Spain. Following this, the War of Spanish Succession began in 1701. With Philip of Anjou on the Spanish throne, war began with France and Spain on one side and the Grand Alliance on the other to maintain the separation of the Spanish and French thrones. French victories had secured Philip's position as king by 1710. His place was furthermore secured by renouncing his rights for the French throne and those of his descendants. Emperor Joseph I died in 1711 and Archduke Charles succeeded his brother as emperor. Since the war was mostly about France having too much power and with Charles now being the new Holy Roman Emperor, most of the alliance initiated peace. 
The war was ended in 1714 by signing the treaties of Rastatt and Baden. And that was it. I hope I could bring you the life of Charles II, the last Spanish Habsburg, closer. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for weekly videos. See you next week at Back to History.